very good evening. Welcome to BizWorld. The first story of the day. Bank Negara Malaysia, BNM, has cut its overnight policy rate, OPR, by 50 basis points to 2% from 2.5% previously, a level last seen during the 2008-2009 global financial crisis. With the latest decision, the OPR has been reduced by a total of 100 basis points, complementing other monetary and financial measures by Bank Negara, as well as fiscal measures this year. BNM noted that global economic conditions have weakened significantly with measures to contain the pandemic causing economic disruption worldwide. Recent indicators show that the global economy is contracting, with global growth projected to be negative for the year. Financial conditions have also tightened amid elevated risk aversion and uncertainty. Growth prospects should improve in 2021 with the expected containment of the pandemic. All 10 key measures in the Prihatin Rakyat Economic Stimulus Package Prihatin have been implemented, comprising 95% of the total package valued at 260 billion ringgit. Finance Minister Datuk Sri Tunku Zafrul Abdul Aziz said this percentage included all government aid that had begun to be channeled to the recipients, including the special Prihatin grant GKP for micro-enterprises announced in the additional Prihatin SME package. Dalam setiap perkongsian laporan ini, seringkali fokusnya adalah pada angka-angka status pelaksanaan. Namun begitu, saya ingin mengingatkan diri saya dan juga anda semua bahawa bantuan ini lebih daripada angka semata-mata. Ini adalah mengenai kehidupan dan nyawa rakyat. It is about real people, real lives, real livelihoods. Meanwhile, Datuk Seri Tunku Zafrul said at least 1 billion ringgit additional allocation was expected to be required on top of the 10 billion ringgit originally earmarked under Bantuan Prihatin Nasional BPN. The minister was speaking during the tabling of the fourth report on the Prihatin package implementation by the Interagency Economic Stimulus Implementation and Coordination Unit. Malaysian Technology Development Corporation MTDC and Serba Dynamic Group Berhad SDGB have launched a 6 million ringgit innovative transformation seed fund. MTDC Chief Executive Officer Datuk Nur Halim Yunus said the objective is to encourage newly established startups involved in digital or business innovation to commercialize their ideas via a clear business model. There is a need for us to develop a critical mass of local technology entrepreneurs who can be closer to our clients, to the clients, the SMEs, who probably could have a better understanding uh, of their challenges. And at the same time, we will have a benef beneficial effect of assisting and developing our own SMEs. And a very good morning to our honored guests. Yang berbahagia. Thank you, Datuk. Host. He said this at the first ever virtual MOU ceremony in the presence of SDGB Group Managing Director Datuk Muhammad Abdul Karim Abdullah. Datuk Nur Halim said post movement control order MCO, a lot of automation would be required among SMEs. Therefore, MTDC was currently working with all its fund recipients and tenants to see what they could do to bring up the SMEs along the technology value chain. Meanwhile, he pointed out that 3D printing technology played a crucial role amid the COVID-19 pandemic as the technology could be used to print out things that were expensive and difficult to source at an affordable cost. He said Mosti had set up a joint community with some ministries such as the Health Ministry and International Trade and Industry Ministry on how 3D printing communities could contribute in assisting the frontliners to fight against COVID-19 in the country. Nestle Malaysia Berhad has allocated 280 million ringgit for capital expenditure, highest in six years, to grow its business this year. This new investment will add new manufacturing capabilities, including expanding current production capacity for Maggi noodles, as well as a new high technology production line in Shah Alam. What we had planned is now being executed. It just happened to occur in the year where COVID happens, no? But uh, we are uh, just, uh, you know, confident on the future of these categories, of these projects, and we are really looking forward to see them happening. 
Nestle has strong pipelines of new products slated in the second half of the year. The company is also capturing growth opportunities via e-commerce acceleration and the increased demand for home delivery products. As such, Nestle ranges of products will expand for consumers shopping online. Nestle stood at 1.43 billion ringgit in the first quarter ended March 31, 2020, versus the same quarter last year at 1.45 billion ringgit. While for the quarter under review, profit before tax stood at 246.3 million ringgit, while net profit stood at 186.3 million ringgit. That's all the time we have for Biz World. I'm Arif Subhan. Thank you for watching and have a productive week ahead.